More than 80% of COVID-19 deaths have occurred in long-term care facilities. I spoke with the chair of the Senate Aging and Long-Term Care Committee, Karen Housley, about some of her concerns. You have been critical of the practice of hospitals discharging patients with COVID-19 to nursing homes, and the Star Tribune editorial board agreed with you in this morning's paper. They write that a battle plan 2.0 is needed to protect seniors. There's not time to build new facilities. What can be done? Uh, thanks again for having me, Shannon. And uh, I, I'm, I'm glad the Star Tribune uh, editorial board agrees with me because I have, I've been saying it since, since March, um, that our seniors really need to be protected. There are 80% of our deaths are happening in long-term care facilities. And now that we're discharging COVID active patients to nursing homes, just doesn't make any sense to me. So we do need a battle plan 2.0. Battle plan 1.0 was a disaster. Uh, the governor and the Department of Health uh, talked a lot, but nothing got done and nothing has changed. I had a meeting the other day with the Department of Health. Uh, we did a committee hearing and there was still a lot of run around, no answers. And you've got family members who wanna see their loved ones that are in these nursing homes and long-term care facilities. It's been almost three months and they haven't been able to hug their mom yet. They're scared to death and so are the residents because are you discharging uh, active COVID patients into a nursing home that who knows if, if there's any cases of it right now. We're working so hard to keep COVID out of our long-term care facilities. It doesn't make any sense at all that we're, we're discharging hospital patients into nursing homes where we're trying to keep seniors safe. So where should these patients go? Uh, you know what? I, and I said from the beginning, we should have a designated building. Um, here, the, the governor, governor and the Department of Health just spent $6 million on a refrigerated building so they could put bodies if our morgues were going to be over, over full. Um, but that hasn't happened. Why didn't they spend the $6 million and have a COVID-designated place for these people to go? That is still what I think uh, should be done, but I don't think there's time for that because um, we've already wasted three months. Here we are three months in, we've had, we have a battle plan that's being talked about and nothing is getting done. These staff and these residents want testing. It's the only way, the only way we can make sure that our seniors are safe if we can make sure everybody is tested and that this virus isn't passing from facility to facility and resident to resident via the staff. Now, I wanna ask you a difficult question because you know, there's, there's limited funds available, but let's say, you know, we do have an elderly patient in a long-term care facility and they have diabetes, they have heart disease, they have another underlying health condition. How far should the state go to protect them? Uh, the state should go to all ends to protect them. And that I'm not seeing that being done right now. Um, there, there are going to be underlying conditions across the board, but it's especially dangerous if you're older. And now you have this virus being brought into your building. So uh, the state has to go as far as, as you would go for your own mother to take care of these people. So it doesn't even matter what it costs. The governor just got $1.8 billion from the federal government. That money should be spent where 80% of our deaths are happening in long-term care facility, yet it's not being spent there. Now, the editorial that I read that I referred to said most often that the virus is entering long-term care facilities through staff and contractors. You would like federal CARES money to be spent on universal testing. So how often should staff members be tested? Should it be mandatory? How do you keep these facilities safe? Uh, and that's what's been so frustrating right now is the, the, the battle plan talked about it and they're having conversations and they're having discussions, yet nothing has been done. These st staff members want to be tested. Right now, we have 1,700 facilities throughout the state. Only 39 of them, three months in, are being tested. And we don't know how often they're being tested, what criteria is around that, how do they pick which of these facilities are being tested? Are they going in weekly or, or every few days? We have no idea on what's happening with the testing. We need to put all hands on deck with this testing, uh, spend the CARES money there. What's happening right now is staff is being asked by their facility, whether it's Presbyterian Homes or Ecumen, to go to their own doctor, use their own insurance or pay out of pocket to get these tests at $150 a pop. Why isn't our government paying for those tests. That's, that's what I've been calling on. We've got $1.8 billion. The government should be paying for this testing for everybody. It's the only way we're gonna get rid of this virus and keep our seniors safe.
Senator Karnhausley, I want to thank you. Thanks, Shannon.